Before D. Broglie, no one has ever thought about the wave nature of the particle. And it's not like D. Broglie was speaking in a dream. Particle can also act like a wave. So the point is that there must be something that have influenced him to make a hypothesis about the wave nature of the particle. But before that... Basically, after the work of Max Planck on the black body radiation and Albert Einstein's work on the photoelectric effect, the wave particle duality of light became the most overrated topic in early 20th century. This dual nature of light influenced T. Broglie to question on the behavior of the material object that it might be possible that particle can also have a dual nature. By examining these two equations, the first one has a difficulty in the case of particles. But not with the second one. So De Broglie suggested that any material particle moving with the momentum P, there is wave of wavelength associated with it. And the relation is given by this equation, where H is a Planck's constant and the wavelength lambda is called the De Broglie wavelength of the particle. Apparently that means we all have a wave nature. But wait, why can't we see the wavy nature of us? Interestingly, the answer is very simple. If you calculate the de Broglie wavelength of any massive object, the wavelength is really very small, which is why we can't even detect it in laboratories. Because to detect it, we need to perform the double slit experiment. And the spacing between the adjustment fringes in the experiment is given by this equation. And with the small wavelength, the spacing has no reasonable value. So even though if we perform the experiment, we still can get the interference fringes. That's why there is no experiment that can be done to reveal the wave nature of macroscopic objects. However, if you notice for particles like electrons and protons, the de Broglie wavelength is in the order of nanometer or picometer, which is detectable as the size of the atomic nuclei is in the order of femtometer. That means we can perform the double slit experiment on these particles to prove the de Broglie correct. <laughs> The experiments that first verified de Broglie's hypothesis involve electron diffraction. Usually, in the diffraction of light, we use the man-made slit called the diffraction grating. But in the case of electron, we can't use grating for electrons. Because electrons has not adequate energy in order that it can pass through the optical grating. Then how are we gonna diffract the electrons? So for that, we use atomic crystal in which there is a periodic arrangement of atoms which give exactly same result that we get in the X-ray diffraction. Basically in the experiment, an accelerated beam of electron having non-relativistic kinetic energy strikes the crystal and the scattered beam is photographed. And the pattern of diffraction that appeared on the screen gives the strong evidence of the wave nature of electron. Here each atoms of the crystal grating act as a scatterer and the scattered electron wave can interfere with each other and we have the crystal diffraction for electrons. The Nobel Prize for this experiment was given to the G.P. Thomson and the two other scientists, Davison and Germer. However, Davison and Germer performed independent experiment to prove the electron wave nature and G.P. Thomson also performed independent experiment to prove the wave nature of electron. The interesting fact here is that J.J. Thomson, who was the father of G.P. Thomson, received the Nobel Prize for discovering the electron and the particle nature of the electron. On the other hand, G.P. Thomson received the Nobel Prize for wave nature of electron. So this is how the wave nature of electron proved the deep correct. <laughs>